yeah, it's coming off of here fine, but somehow I've got like a bunch of it inside of my shirt. Alright, this is the Two Burner Hell's Forge, and it comes with an insulating kale wool blanket lining the inside of it. It is unhealthy to use this with the wool exposed, so they include some refractory, and this needs to be mixed up and applied over the wool to seal it up. Alright, we have water, and this is the Hellcoat 3000 that came with the forge. We're going to be mixing this up with water until we get a milkshake consistency. It needs to be pourable. I'm doing this by hand, but once we get close, I'll use the electric mixer. Alright, I think that's respectable. This is a mud mixer for drywall, but this should really speed us up quite a bit. Every once in a while you want to stop and scrape down the sides. This is round and the container is square, so we want to make sure we're getting the corners mixed as well. Not quite milkshake. No more water. I don't know about you, but that looks like a milkshake to me. All right, we have our chip brush. We got our milkshake consistency hell coat. And we have our forge with the kale wool blanket inside it. This kale wool is not good to breathe. It's small little fibers, kind of like asbestos. I don't know that this is a carcinogen, but I don't want it in my lungs. So I'm gonna be wearing a N95 respirator. And all we do is just put a coat on it. We try to aim for a 1 16th to 1 8th inch layer all the way inside to completely coat the kale wool so that we don't have to wear a respirator while we're using this. really working this first coat into the wool because I really want this saturated. I don't want any bubbles. I want the top layer of this wool really saturated and then the last coat I'll come through with whatever's left and thicken it up. And as we work we will flip this over onto its side so that gravity will help us coat that. When you have it upside down, there are burner holes and you want to make sure you don't fill those burner holes up with the refractory. We've got the interior of it coated, but 
these ends or maybe even the worst spot because this is where the kale wool has been cut so there's gonna be a lot of loose fiber so even this end needs to be fully coated don't be shy really get in there All right, we've got the whole thing coated on the inside and both ends. So now I'm just gonna do a little bit of cleanup on it and we will let it sit for 24 hours and cure. All right, it's been 48 hours. The Hellcoat 3000 coating that we applied on the inside of the forge is all set up. And we need to do a burn on it now, which means we need to set up the plumbing. This is a pretty simple process there's a fitting here that needs to be plumbed to the regulator and hose and then that gets attached to our propane and there is a nozzle here and that gets inserted inside the burner tube these are venturi burners so at the end of this copper nozzle here there is a tiny hole they're identical on both sides and when you turn propane on propane is ejected out of that hole and it is injected up to the center of this burn tube. As that propane is moving through this burner tube at a really high velocity, that causes a low pressure, which sucks air into these inlet holes. The air and the propane mix in the tube, and you get flame coming out of the end. Now to regulate the mixture of the air and propane, you can move this choke down and cover up these inlet holes and that prevents it from aspirating as much air into the system. Step one, nearly the only step, is to hook this up to the propane hose. The next step is to attach the burners to the manifold. Those will attach with a set screw and an Allen wrench. They just slide on and tighten down. Now this whole assembly gets inserted into the forge. Slide it down until the burners are slightly exposed. That looks good to me. And then we simply tighten the set screws down. All right, we've tested for leaks. We've inserted the burner tubes and we've let the clay set up for 48 hours. The only thing left to do now is to light it and let it run for three minutes and then let it rest for one hour and that will let this clay fully cure. All right, this has been resting for about an hour now and it's all cooled off and it is nice and hard. This isn't super hard like concrete. If you push too hard on it, it will crack. You can see some small cracking here and down here. There's a little bit of chipping on the floor here. That's normal. The kale wool isn't exposed and that's the important part. This is not super resilient. It's not permanent. You will have to eventually redo it. It'll crack and get dinged up as you use it. And if you push hard on the side, it will crack and expose the kale wool. So that's mainly a problem on the floor. So we have fire bricks that will fit in here. And you carefully slide these in. 
This does two things. It gives us a nice flat work surface to rest our metal on. And two, it's more durable and easily replaceable than the clay on the walls. The clay on the walls will eventually have to be redone. You'll have to reline this as the clay cracks and breaks down and gets dinged. But this fire brick is gonna be more resilient and it's more easily replaceable. As this gets coated in borax or cracks or whatever, you just slide the brick out and slide a new one in and you're good to go. So this is really a must have for the floor of your forge. All right, we are D-U-N done, but I am not ready to use this thing yet. I have a cart coming. I'm gonna mount this to it to make it more mobile. And I have some fire bricks coming to use as doors and that'll help hold in the heat while we work. Once that happens, we'll put this guy into rotation. So you should see it in future videos. If you found this helpful and you wanna see those future videos, hit the subscription button, click the notification bell, and I'll see you next time.